Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Sunrise Morning Moose, and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page, where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome yellow, fire red, ultramarine blue, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have two brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the other good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint a base coat to the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my small brush to demonstrate how I'm gonna create a custom color for my background. I'm gonna be using a light peachy tone as the base coat for the entire canvas, and then we'll build all of our details off of that. So I have pre-mixed my color, which is right here, and I'll show you how I got there. So what I've used is a lot of white, and then I'm using just a teeny tiny touch of yellow, red, and brown. So the yellow and red is gonna bring it into a nice peachy type of a color, but it might be a little bit too vibrant for my setting. So the brown will help to kind of neutralize it and make it a little bit softer looking. So this is gonna start my, my peachy tone and then I'm just gonna add just a touch of the brown in it, just a little tiny dot, and that'll give you a nice peachy type of a tone. Yours might end up a little bit more yellow than mine. It might end up a little bit more pink than mine. It's all right. As long as you just have something nice and neutral and soft that is appealing to your eye, it will all work out. So once you've got that color in place and you're happy with it, you're just gonna take the large brush and paint the entire canvas with it. So you can see as I'm applying, even though it was a nice light color, as I'm putting it next to my white, you can really see that there is definitely a peachy type of tone to it. You, and again, you could certainly have yours lighter or darker or with a, with a different type of tone to it if you wanted it to be you know, more spring-like. Maybe you do, uh, you know, a blue at the top, or, you know, if you want it to be more of a snowstorm, maybe it's got more gray tones into it as opposed to these peachy tones. I'm going for a nice kind of sunrise, sunset type of painting, so I wanted to have this nice peachy tone as, a, as an undertone for the whole painting. So it's going to help me to build those soft, wintry sunset sunrise type of colors as well as have a, a nice neutral hue to work the snow on top of as well and my brook and all the other wonderful aspects that I'm going to have in my painting. So I'm just kind of getting the paint on here with no specific brush stroke. I do tend to kind of go 
back and forth left to right with almost like a crisscross type of brush stroke when I'm getting a full canvas done with a solid color but you could certainly use any brush stroke that you'd like and then once I've got the entire canvas covered what I like to do is just kind of go back and forth left to right what this does is it levels out my paint so that way I don't have any really thick spots um, and it also will help me to catch any spots that I might have missed uh, during that initial kind of uh, application of the paint. You could also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. You can wrap that color right around the edges. That'll be up to you. And then once you've got this done, we will be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sky and the brook. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are that custom peach color, brown, red, yellow, white, and blue. <laughs> so everything except for black. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be bringing my sky down about two thirds of the way down my canvas. Um, I'm gonna have it a little bit darker at the top and then it's gonna fade down into some nice, pretty sunset colors. We'll be putting the actual sun on later, so don't worry about doing that now. And then we're gonna put um, the reflection of the sky in our brook. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna um, put a little bit of a touch of brown and my base coat of my peach on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna create a really loose outline of where I want my sky to end and where I want my brook to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about halfway up or down this left-hand side. So for me, that's about right about here. I'm gonna come down from that about an inch and a half to two inches and make myself a little tiny mark. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side. So this is about halfway and I'm about an inch and a half to two inches below that. I'm gonna um, attach these two markers with just a real loose kind of light sketchily line. I don't need this to be really invasive. I just wanna give myself a nice stopping point for my um, landscape. I'm gonna use this same color combination on my brush to do my brook. So I'm gonna come on the left side about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas, make myself a little bit of a mark. I'm gonna connect here to this top over here. So what I'll, I'll, all I need to do is kind of, you can start anywhere over in through here, and then just give yourself a real kind of loose line that's going to just give you this kind of jagged line separation from your water versus your land. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. I'm going to find myself about halfway in the bottom of my canvas, which is right about here. You can go to the left of that about two inches, make myself a little bit of a marker. And if you can't see your mark, just put a little bit more brown paint on your brush. That'll help it be a little bit more visible. And then I'm gonna meet that up in through here. But I wanna give like a little bit of a dip in my, um, in my profile of my brook. So I'm gonna bring this over in through here. This is where my moose is gonna kinda of come down to the shoreline and have its sip of water. So something like that will work for me on that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of my sky with mostly brown on my brush and a touch of my peach. So I have mostly brown with a touch of peach. I want my the top of my sky to be pretty dark, but it doesn't have to go all the way brown. So that's why I'm also using that peach in the equation. What this is gonna do is it's gonna provide me with some nice atmospheric dimension in my sky. Now I'm picking up just my peach and I didn't wash my brush. So as I come down my sky, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. It's gonna get softer and softer because I'm not washing my brush. I just continue to pick up that peach color. In a minute, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start introducing maybe a little bit of white and some other sunsetty type of a color. But right now I'm just kind of working on getting my, um, my second coat on the sky with this peach color, just pulling it further down that sky in through, I would say about half, midway down the sky is when I'm gonna start introducing other colors. So right now, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna pick up some white paint and I'm gonna start over here on this right hand side to start introducing a real nice light layer 
to that um, to that sky. This lightness that I'm putting on right now is going to help to enhance the intensity of my sunset colors that I'm going to put on in a minute. I know I'm going to have my sun somewhere over in through here, so I want for me I want that intensity of those colors to really be vibrant. So I'm lightening up the base behind what's going to be those really vibrant sunset colors. And I didn't wash my brush, so every now and again you'll see some of maybe my brown or the peach being released from my bristles, which I love it when that happens. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is, without washing my brush, I'm picking up a tiny bit of yellow paint, and I'm going to start introducing this yellow into my sky. So as I do my sunsets or sunrises, I love for all of these colors to just intermingle with one another and talk to each other. So as my paint is drying, it's in that wet process, if I've got a little yellow on my brush and I want to kind of spread the wealth of that color, I will just lightly brush it into some of that other wet paint. So that way it carries that color in a harmonious way throughout that, that, um, that design element. I just picked up more yellow. I'm putting some down in through here. I'm going to uh, put some red on top of this in a minute, but right now just kind of put a little bit more yellow on in through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up red plus a little bit of my peach so my red doesn't overpower the um, the area. So this is red plus a little bit of peach and you could certainly pre-mix yourself a, a pink tone if you wanted to. You could just do as I'm doing and kind of letting it mix right on your canvas. I really like it when my paint, when my colors mix right on my canvas. <laughs> Again, it just feeds my, my painterly eye and my, my, my process. I enjoy that watching it kind of <laughs> mix right on my, on my canvas, but you might find that you want to do a different way. I'm going to keep picking up a little bit of red plus my plus my um, peachy tone. So again, I've got some nice pink, reddish tones coming down towards the bottom of my, um, of my horizon or of my sky. In a minute, I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of blue to the equation. I find a lot of times as I'm looking at these pretty sunset skies that as the colors are kind of meeting the earth, they take on a little bit of a haziness. So I'm going to create that haziness with a touch of blue on my brush with a little bit of my peach tone as well. So I'm going to put this right at the horizon line. And again, I'm going to get it to, to blend in with my um, with the sky. So it all looks like it's just kind of in, in the atmosphere together. And if it goes too much for you, just pick up a little bit more of that peach and that will help you to tone it down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very similar process to the water, only I'm going to start with my dark color down at the bottom and reverse it and go to the lighter color up at the top. But I think I want a little bit more peach in through here. And again, we're going to be doing a second uh, coat on the sky, especially where near where we want to put that sun. So if this isn't perfect right now, you can either let it dry and do another layer similar to this, or just wait until we get to the sun portion, and then you can tweak the neighboring um, the neighboring colors. But right now, I'm going to start down at the bottom of my water in the same color order I did for the sky. So I'm picking up brown plus a little bit of my peach, and I'm going to start way down at the bottom like this. And I don't have as far to go on my water as I as big of a space. It's a little bit smaller of a space, so I'm going to transition these colors a little bit more rapidly, but I still want to show that color pattern. So I'm just reversing the color pattern. I just picked up my peach, and I'm going to get it to, I'm do, doing the same left to right type of um, brush stroke, so it just looks like it is a reflection of that sky. You could certainly put more movement in it if you want to. I'm just kind of going left to right. I'm going to pick up white now to get that lighter area um, within that sky. So just a little bit of white with my with my peach. I think I'm gonna. I think I want a little bit more yellow in my sky and in my water. I'm picking up a touch more yellow right now. I want to touch, touch more yellow up in my water, which means I need to put a little bit more up in the sky in through here. So, you know, you just kind of 
if you want a little bit more intensity in the color, you can certainly add it up top too. So that's that helped me. And we're just bringing it all the way to the edges of my um, of my waterway. Now I'm going to start picking up a little bit more of my yellow to get it to go underneath here. And now I'm going to start picking up a little bit of my red plus a touch of that peach. So I'm just doing it in a, in the same color order that I did the sky. So if you if you um, get confused, just kind of look back at what you did on the sky and just say, okay, if I have yellow, yellow here, and then it goes into the red, then that's the order that you want to do it um, in the water. And then once I've got this done, I'm just putting a little bit more red up in through here so it can be a little bit more intense. Most of this is going to get co covered by your by your mousse anyways, <laughs> so that'll be all right. And then once you've got this done, if you feel you want to do another layer on it, feel free to do so. Um, we are going to be using, uh, we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, I just put a little bit more yellow on my brush. <laughs> once you've got this done, you can uh, put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sun and its reflection in the water. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, red, blue, and probably um, maybe a little bit of that peach color if I need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my sun in place and then I'm gonna build some intense sunsetty sky atmosphere around it. So I'm having my sun uh, somewhere in this region, or maybe about three inches away from my horizon line, and I'm maybe, I don't know, six, seven inches away from the edge of my canvas, so somewhere in this vicinity. I'm going to have mine almost looking like it's sinking into a, to the cloud formation, so I'm going to have it kind of flat on the bottom, and then a little bit rounder on the top as if it's just kind of melting into the the little clouds around it. I'm putting mine with some soft edges so I'm really just put a little bit of white paint on there and then I'm just gently kind of forming the outside edge the way that I want it to be. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a little bit of yellow paint on my dirty brush, so a tiny bit of yellow paint. I'm going to start building the glowing um, atmosphere around it. So a little bit of yellow paint, I get it to kind of blend into the edges of my sun and just kind of let it work its way out into the atmosphere. You can add a little bit of water or liquid medium to your brush in order to get that yellow paint to just dissipate into the atmosphere as opposed to it just being a solid yellow ring around the um, around the sun. I'm now picking up a tiny bit more white paint in order to get the edges of my sun to softly blend into the edge of that yellow so this way it looks like it's more glowing as opposed to just a um, again a yellow kind of outline around the sun so something like that works for me visually now once I've got that on there I can start to add as many colors around it as I want so I'm gonna start with a little bit of red and yellow on my brush at the same time and I'm going to get some nice um, little kind of glowing clouds right around it. I'm putting a little bit more, excuse me, I have to take a sip. <laughs> I'm going to start coughing any second now. <laughs> a little tickle in my throat there. So I'm going to um, use my, my brush to kind with a little bit of water on it to get this to just kind of dissipate again out into the atmosphere. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow plus my peach color on my brush so this way I can get that yellow to blend out a little bit more, maybe adding a little bit more red to my brush. Right now I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between the yellow, red, and my peach color in order to get these really faint, um, cl I, I, I guess, cloud formations around the sun so it makes it look like there's um, just the that the setting sun is kind of casting its glow on these little bits of of um, 
of clouds floating by in the atmosphere and you can always just keep adding a little bit of water to your brush to get them to, to dissipate a little bit. I'm now going to pick up a tiny bit of blue on my dirty brush because so I have blue plus a little bit of red actually on my brush. This is going to add almost like the a uh, little bit of a purpley type of hue to some of these clouds. And again, this is one of those things that as you're looking in the atmosphere uh, at a sunset, there, there's so many different variables as to the things that you're seeing. So don't be afraid when you're, when you're going into a painting like this to say, oh, I, I just want to have like this really faint kind of cloud right off in the distance. And just, you know, putting those little uh, you know, kind of nuances or these little kind of accents of things out in the atmosphere is really going to make it look more realistic. I'm going back into my peach with a little bit of yellow just to soften a couple of these right around um, the sun itself in through here. And then I would just, once I've, you know, got everything kind of in, in its place where I feel it's looking pretty good, I would let it dry I would step back from it, see if I see if it is believable looking to me. If there's a couple of areas that are too bright or too too dark, I would definitely adjust them a little bit. But you can always just kind of tap back into that original um, peachy tone in order to make any of these a little bit more subtle or have a little bit more fluff to them or glow to them. So that's going to be up to you. Once you've got it pretty much settled the way that you want it to be, um, actually, I think I want to, just before I move down into the water, just kind of soften this little guy a little bit. So I just put more of that blue on my brush with a little bit of my peach just to soften up these little notes that I had put over on these sides. And then I'm going to do a similar activity down in the water. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up white only in my water. My water is going to be moving so I can skew these colors a little bit more and have a little bit more fun with it. So I'm going to take, I'm going to come straight down from my sun and then I'm going to come down my, my, um, my brook a little bit. So it's a little bit off to the left and this is going to be upside down. So I'm going to put my, my white on in through here and then I'm going to put the yellow hue on the top side of it. So let me just pull this down into my water a little bit in through here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on my brush in order to get that yellow hue or glow around the top side of it. And you can really go pretty darn heavy and exciting in this reflection because the reflection is moving water. So you can certainly skew those colors as long as you've got a pretty similar color pattern to it, then it'll be believable. I'm picking up more yellow to put it on the bottom side as well. And now I'm going to pick up some of my red and yellow to um, enhance and talk about these low, these lower kind of clouds that that had formed underneath, or have been, um, I had created underneath that, underneath the sun. So something like this. So that was just a little bit of red and yellow. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my blue just to get some of these in through here. And then once I've got the color pattern in there, I can start having fun with, with uh, adding more of my. Um, my peachy tone if I wanted to, or more red or more yellow, whatever is speaking to you, that's that's where you want to bring it. I'm just picking it up a little bit more of my blue. And again, so the, the colors that I'm using are red, yellow, blue, my peachy tone right now as well. And, and again, this whole area is going to be pretty well disguised by our um, mousse. So you don't really have to go too, too invasive, but if you want to accentuate those colors in the sunset, allowing for them to be um, evident around that that reflection is what what will make you be able to see them even more. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this little brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some distant trees and we're going to put some snow on the ground. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a very soft 
landscape of sorts or distant trees on that horizon line, then I'm going to be creating some nice texture within the two pieces of land here uh, on the right and on the left in order to give us a little bit of a snowy landscape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a gray color for my background trees. I have already pre-mixed it here. What this is is mostly black and brown and just a little bit of white paint. So this is going to give me kind of just a medium tone gray that will help to make these back trees look nice and out of focus. So I'm going to use this, just a little bit of paint on my brush, just at the tip of the brush. If you feel you have a lot, you can just wipe it off on your paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of re-identify this horizon line. You don't have to do a lot. I'm really hardly touching my canvas right now. I'm just looking to give myself some kind of um, nice transition into the snow line in a minute. And then as I come over in this direction over here, I'm going to start popping up a couple of trees. So I'm going to be using this dotting type of a technique, which is just a, a little stippling effect that's going to give me the illusion of some, some trees off in the distance. As I come down in through this area, I'll keep this nice and low lying so we don't lose that pretty sunset in the background. If your color as it dries is too similar to that background color, you may want to make it darker and that way you'll be able to see it better. I know that mine's going to dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet. So as I'm coming through this, I'm watching it. I will be adding a little bit of black in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of rolling with it the way that it is. If you want to have some evergreen trees, you can kind of do these little ones that look like triangles. That's going to give you that typical fir type of um, pine tree look to it. And then over here, just kind of dotting in a, a varying height type of um, treescape in the background. And then once I've got that on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up without washing my brush a touch of brown and black and just an itty bitty bit on the end of my brush, not a lot at all. And I'm going to put a little bit of darkness at the bottom of um, some of these areas. <clears throat> So I'm doing kind of a rubbing slash dotting type of a technique so I can get a little bit of darkness down at the bottom of these, um, of these formations so it looks like it's got some good dimension to it. You can even put a little bit of darkness on the side opposing the sun. So this would be the back side of this particular tree. If I put a little bit of darkness there, it's going to make it look like it's um, having the effects of the sun. And then I just keep picking up just a tiny bit of my black and my brown. Sorry. <laughs> the, the tickle in my throat won't go away. I'll, uh, good thing I have my hot cocoa to, to keep me, keep my whistle wet. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit over here on the right hand side. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off without washing it and pick up a tiny bit of white paint. And this white is going to give me just a little illusion that there's a tiny bit of snow on some of these um, trees in through here. So not much. I'm hardly touching it. You could even be picking up white plus your gray if the white is too powerful. Remember, we just want these to be kind of out of focus. We're just creating a fun little illusion of a distant kind of tree line in through there. And then once I've got that, I'm going to do a similar process down below, but I'm going to also add a little bit of blue to it. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to start with my dark and work my way to the light. So I'm actually going to pick up brown and black to start and a very little bit on my brush. I'm going to put some dark areas where I'm going to have some trees and some bushes and stuff. So I'm going to have a little bit of darkness in through here. So I'm really just kind of rubbing in these darker areas. Maybe we've got a little bit of a dark area coming down towards the waterway. I can even take this dark color and almost give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath where the um, where the land meets the water in through here. So this is just a little bit of the brown and the black separating out that um, water from the, from the land itself. And I'm putting it on the opposing side of where the 
where the light is. So this land line would cast a shadow onto the water in through here. And then maybe I would have a little bit over on this right side as well. So this is just a little bit of my black and my brown from the land casting a little bit of a shadow into that water. And I'm gonna have some brush or some um, little sticks and stuff over in through there. I'm gonna have a little, this again is still just black and brown on my brush a little bit. I'm gonna have some dark stuff down at the bottom of this snowy area. So just kind of rubbing it left to right. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of gray plus a teeny tiny bit of ultramarine blue. I didn't wash my brush. So again, I'm just looking to allow myself to have this real snowy, wintry mix type of colors throughout the, um, throughout the snowy area. I'm gonna to continue to pick up that color combination. I will add lightness or white to it in a minute, but right now, just looking to give myself some nice snowy type of um, colors in through here, especially down at this bottom side. I'm gonna keep up here nice and bright, so I'm not gonna to put too much of the gray and blue up there, but I'll definitely put a bunch of it down in through here. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm thinking, what is my land doing? So there's a little river bank or um, bank of snow kind of coming over in this direction. So if you want there to look like there's a little bit of a hill of sorts, you could certainly curve it in a downward motion. But right now I'm feeling like that's pretty good, maybe a little bit more up and through here. And then I'm gonna just pick up white paint on my dirty brush. So I've got white on my dirty brush. I'm gonna put a lot of it up in through here where I want my snow to look the brightest up towards that sunset -y kind of area up in through here. This is where my, um, my brook kind of goes and snakes behind that little bank over in through there. And you know, I'm kind of flying through this because I have distinct thoughts in my head, but if you want yours to be, um, you know, take your time and have your snow a little bit smoother or have your, you know, more distinct um, look to specific area, then take your time. You don't have to fly through it like I'm doing. I'm just allowing this white to kind of be um, soft on top of some of those dark areas that I did and then brighter in the areas where I think the sun is hitting it the most. Like if my sun's over there, I probably have a nice bright spot here. I might have a nice bright spot in through here. I would have brightness back here where it's um, the closest to the sun. And then I can get these this area to just kind of dissipate and give myself this um, almost like a a glaze of sorts on top of the the other colors that I had put on there. And then that's looking nice. I'm getting rid of a lot of that peach by just kind of adding a nice um, soft layer of my white on top of it. I think I'd have some nice bright white on this little river bank in through here. And then I'm just adding a little bit of a layer on top of all the other colors that I did. So I'm I'm allowing them to speak together. I'm actually picking up white, blue, and gray right now because I don't want this area to get too light. So I picked up white, blue, and gray in order to get this area to have some snow on it but to look a little bit darker than the um, areas right next to the um, the light source. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be adding sticks and a beautiful moose and all kinds and trees and all kinds of other stuff. So if yours is not exactly fully finished at this point, it's okay because you've still got little details left to go. Um, but you can certainly continue to work on this. We're actually going to be, I'm going to be using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your snow done, you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting some tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black and brown. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating trees, winter trees that don't have leaves. So they're gonna have a ton of branches on them, but we'll be putting some light fluffy snow that's resting on top of all these branches later. So it might have the illusion of having a little bit of leaves, but 
it's going to be snow that's on it. So we're going to start with all the branches and the and the trunks, and then in a later step, we'll add the fluffy snow. So I'm going to at all times be using uh, black and brown and just kind of alternating back and forth. I also have water on my brush, so this is going to give me um, a nice fluid brush stroke for my trees. I'm going to start my first one in the middle, about the middle of this piece of land in through here, and then I'm going to come in maybe about two inches or so. This is going to be the trunk or the base of my tree. I like to have trees that um, the base is a little bit wider than the trunk going up because when I when I look at the majority of trees in my yard, they seem to always be a little bit wider as they're going into the ground and then all of the branches seem to get thinner and thinner the farther away from the um, the trunk that they get. So as I build my trees, those are the thoughts that go through my head is your, your the the main structure of the tree is probably going to be the thickest and then those branches that are coming out and going away from the center of the tree are going to be thinner and thinner. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of giving myself my my footprint for the main part of the tree. I will go and then do the same thing for the other trees that I'm going to have in my um, in my little setting. And then I'm going to come back and be really fast and carefree with the tiny little branches that I'm going to create. Because I know when I go to um, do all the itty bitty branches that I'm going to want to have on the edges, I'm going to go really fast and my I most likely will um, not pay attention as much as I probably should. And I might go out of control <laughs> and and make a tree look you know too big or have too much information just because I was having fun painting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get my trees in place first, the main structure of them, and then I will um, then I will tackle my little branches later. You can have as many trees as you want. What I'm doing is I'm going to have mine kind of a biggest one here, and then I'm going to get them to go a little bit smaller as they go away from um, the side of my of my canvas. So that way, it just I don't take up too much of my um, sunset. Uh, depiction over on the right hand side and this way it kind of for me feels like it's balancing the painting really well. I think I'm gonna have another little one in through here maybe this one kind of splits down at the bottom and maybe this one kind of is a little bit skinnier and smaller something like that that works out pretty well. I don't want this one to go too much higher then say that one. So again, this is the time where I'm kind of just concentrating on how how large I want that tree to be and where I want the the branches to be extended to. And then once I've got this information in here, my my process of getting those smaller branches on. Oops, I just put my hand in the wet paint. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have an extra branch coming off of that other tree. Um, so right in through here. See, these are the happy accidents that we long for in painting. There we go. I think I'm actually going to have a couple of little tiny ones in through here too, just to fill this out. So it looks like we've got maybe a couple of fun, um, small little baby trees kind of coming in, in through here. And you can put it in the dark areas that you created in your um, snow line or in your snow or you can just create new areas. We're going to be putting lots of little twigs and sticks and stuff in a little bit. Um, so now I'm getting into my teeny tiny branches which is going to be a million of them. So I have my paint on my brush and I have very um, fluid paint which means I used a lot of moisture in my bristles and I'm I like to just kind of tap and give these really um, a, a large number of branches, especially since I know that I'm not going to be having leaves on this. Whenever I look at trees that don't have leaves on them, there's a million branches. <laughs> so if I want this to look more on the realistic side, especially at these little edges, I'm putting, you know, 
as many tiny little branches as I can. I'm trying to not put my hand in wet paint, but I inevitably probably will, but I'm definitely putting tons of little branches up at the top. Now, you can even use like, I'm, I'm being very carefree with this, you can use little kind of squiggly marks if you want to. I'm going to be having um, snow kind of resting on these uh, tips of this tree in through here. So I know that, you know, if my, if my branches end up being a little chaotic looking, uh, they will be kind of unified when I go to do my snow later. So I'm not terribly concerned about the chaotic kind of nature that I'm, I'm putting um, these little tiny branches in right now. And again, I keep using brown and black with water on my brush. Um, I'm using these little tiny branches more as a filler throughout my tree. So I don't care if one of them connects or not. Nobody's going to notice by the time I'm done putting all of my snow on. So that, again, I'm just really concentrating on putting a, a ton of little tiny marks, especially at the edges of these um of these branches so it again will look nice and filled in and I will have a lot of substance throughout that tree. If you find that you're pushing too hard with your brush, like up here I felt I was pushing too hard with my brush, that meant that I didn't have enough moisture and or paint on my brush, so I had to reload. So those are just little signs as you're as you're painting if you're struggling with getting long um, continual thin type of brush strokes, it's probably because you need to reload your brush or you need to put more fluid on it or something to, to help you along the way. Just pushing harder is probably not going to be the answer. The answer would be, you know, adding or modifying whatever is on your brush to give you the results that you're looking for. So that's to me, looking pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna now put my reflections down below. So, I'll, well, actually, I think I want a little guy. Well, I'll do that later. We're gonna put sticks and stuff. I'm just gonna do the trees right now. So what you wanna do is just go directly below the tree. So come directly below the tree, go into your water where it meets the land like this. I've just got, again, black and brown on my brush right now, and I'm gonna try and give this reflection. I'm coming straight down. Um, to the bottom of my canvas, but I got to give the a similar type of um, way. So if it gets narrow and then at some point it splits, that's what I'm going to try and emulate in my reflection. So something like that, just give a little split in through there, and that's all I need to do for that one. Then I'm going to go to the next one, and again, just go directly below it, get a similar width, and then try and get a similar profile upside down. <laughs> so it sounds kind of easy, but <laughs> it's definitely not easy. So I'm gonna, I'm watching my profile. So I see that this split is higher than this one. So I need to make this split closer to um, that land line in order to make this look um, like a believable reflection. So I just keep reloading my brush. So that looks pretty good to me in through there. And then there's another split up in through here. So if I can catch that split past here, I'll do it. If not, no worries. I think I got it somewhere in through there. Looks pretty good. And then I've got these two little tiny trees. So maybe I need a little more water on my brush. There we go. And something right in through here is gonna work just a little skinny guy that ended up a little thicker than i wanted it but that's all right something like that and then we got another little guy in through here that comes like that and then goes like this <laughs> it's tough going upside down like this to try and give it a similar way i've got some kind of weird little split there so we're gonna try and see if i can emulate that there we go and then we got one more tree to go so this one would be neat if you, I feel like I can get a little tiny bit in through here, like maybe there's a little water there and then catch it again over here. So that would be a neat thing if you can do that too. Um, and then this one just kind of goes straight down. So I'm gonna go straight down with this one like that. Just put a little bit more water on my brush so I can get a nice continual brush stroke and this splits right at the land. So this one's gonna be a pretty simple one in through here. And then 
I don't think I have any other trees I want to do, so we're going to actually use our large brush for the... Actually, let's use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the ground. I'm going to use my small brush because I'm going to be doing a bunch of sticks and grass and little piles of snow, something with little bits of detail just to kind of give this a final touch to it. So I know that I want to make sure that my trees don't just look like they're, you know, stuck in the ground. I want to have little pieces of brush and grass and stuff kind of sticking up around them. Maybe some little pieces of grass and stuff sticking up around the edges of my um, waterway. Maybe a couple of branches kind of lying down on the ground. My goal here is to provide some good perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'll do little pieces of grass and sticks and stuff in the distance. And then as I work my way towards the bottom of my canvas, I'm going to be making them bigger, bigger pieces of grass, bigger sticks, so it brings the painting towards the viewer. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using a combination of black, brown, uh, white, and maybe some blue type, blue and gray type of combination. I'm going to start with black and brown on my brush to provide myself some um, little silhouetted, silhouetted type, type of small um, dark marks. So again, this is in, in essence, kind of just allowing for a natural kind of organic look, especially at the bottom of these trees, so they look like they've got, um, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, outdoor elements to it. Maybe you have an area where you've got a couple of little pieces of grass kind of sticking up out of the snow in little areas. Maybe you've got a low lying by the, by the shoreline. So again, I'm just using the black and the brown right now to create these fun little pieces of grass that would, you know, or sticks and stuff that would just kind of pop out of the snow surface. Um, and that way, again, it gives it a little bit more dimension. Maybe we've got a fun little larger stick <laughs> of sorts coming out over in through here. I, again, just kind of keep going back and forth between my black and my brown so I have little tonal changes. Oh, I feel like this one would now give me a little reflection in the water. That was a big enough one, close enough to the waters to do that. I'm going to do some over on this right-hand side, maybe over in through here where I feel... Um, you know, it's down towards the, the riverbank and we've got maybe some little pieces of grass and stuff sticking up, being really carefree with their placement. Maybe we've got some coming out from over in through here. So wherever you feel you want to place them. And now as I'm working my way towards the viewer, I'm going to make them a little bit larger. So I'm finding maybe some darker areas in my snow. I'm pulling up wiggling my brush a little bit, getting some little areas to pop out. Maybe I've got some little bits of grass over on the uh, other side of the bank in through here. So have fun with, you know, pulling up some little pieces kind of coming up, at, you know, out of the riverbank on the other side of that snow. That'll help to make that snow line nice and visible. So if, you, if you're having difficulty seeing it and you want it to be more visible, just put some of this dark stuff on the other side of it. Maybe we've got a couple of little sticks and stuff laying down on the ground in this area in through here. So again, right now I'm just using black and brown to kind of place all these things where I want them to be placed. And then in a minute, I'll add little bits of snow and and, and, you know, highlights and stuff on them so they look a little bit more believable so they're not just black lines um, strewn about the canvas. And so that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to just start back over here. I'm going to be using uh, a combination of white. Maybe I'm going to start with white, and if I feel that I want to, you know, do any other colors, I certainly will. I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up a little bit of white. So this is going to help to put little piles of snow around those little objects that you just created. So if they're sticking out of the ground, they might have a good amount of snow just piled up next to them. Maybe there's a little pile of snow at the bottom of your tree. Maybe you've got a little bit of extra snow in through here. So I'm just adding these, these little bits of pops of whiter snow as um, 
along the edges of the water, maybe some in through these little pieces of dark stuff that I just put. I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue paint on my dirty brush right now too, just so as I'm going towards this left, um, my snow isn't so bright white because my my light source is over to the right, so it would get a little bit darker as it goes farther away. So I'm using um, a touch of the blue with my um, with my white paint. You could also use a little bit of gray too if you wanted to, but I am just kind of allowing for some nice, fun little informational uh, marks that are just gonna, you know, really sell the story of this being maybe out in the wilderness and it having, you know, Mother Nature has just kind of laid laid down all of these fun little objects throughout the throughout the um, throughout the landscape. So that I like on that side. I'm gonna come over to the right side. I'm using a little bit of white to just kind of illuminate some of these little pieces of grass, especially over in through here, because I feel like they'd be catching quite a bit of that light from the um, from the sun. You can pop a little bit on in through here. And if you felt like you wanted to use some of your sunset colors on some of this snow, you could certainly do that as well. That's going to be a judgment call on your part. If you feel that it would work out for you, feel free to do so. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over on these guys in through here. And again, as I'm coming down towards the bottom of my canvas, it's getting farther and farther away from that light source. So I would start using a little bit of white, blue, and gray. I've got all three colors on my brush at the same time to maybe add a highlight on top of this stick in through here. Maybe I've got some snow sitting on some of these sticks in through here. Maybe I pick up a little bit more white in order to get little little piles and stuff or little highlights uh, on these snow pieces. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that gray and blue and white to just accumulate some little piles of snow here and there. So as I'm doing this, I'm just thinking, all right, well, maybe I've got a stick sticking out in through here, but maybe there's a little pile of snow next to it. So you can, in your head, imagine what you're seeing. So if you're saying to yourself, oh, I see a pile of snow here, just put a little bit more of that, that bluish color, or maybe it just looks great to you and you don't n feel the need to put any additional marks on it. If you want it to stick out a little bit, put a little bit more lightness on it and picking up a little bit more white just to get a touch on these guys, these pieces of grass sticking out in through here. And then I would definitely let mine dry and step away from it, look at it from a distance, see if there's any additional um, stuff that I want to put on it. I felt like I wanted a little bit more lightness around um, this area to give it a little bit more volume in that snow maybe a little bit more of my blue and my gray, and just give myself just a little bit more texture in this snow in through here. And then once you've got this done, you know, again, pick, do any additional stuff that you want. We're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So you can just put the small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, gray, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a real softness um, for the base coat for this snow that's sitting on them. And then we're just gonna put some little very faint snow sitting on top. I'm gonna start with an itty bitty bit of black paint. So when I say an itty bitty bit, I mean like I just have a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush. You can even tap it off on your paper towel. What I'm doing is I'm gonna create this illusion of more little tiny branches inside that tree. So this is gonna provide me that um, dimensional element that I really would like to have. It's gonna fill in any spots that might look a little bit too sparse. And you don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just kind of polka dotting, um, stippling these little tight, these little sections in here that are going to make it look like th that's just a thousand little branches in there. Sure, 
you could debate whether or not it's it's leaves <laughs> but in my head it's just a thousand little branches at the tips of these um, larger branches and it's also going to provide me with a nice base for my for my snow I'm going to do in a minute so again this is just a tiny tiny bit of black paint and I'm giving myself that interior structure and giving myself some nice some nice fluffiness in there so now what I'm going to do without washing my brushes I'm picking up a tiny bit of gray paint so you might have a little bit more gray on your brush than you did the black and as I'm doing this I'm going to do it more more towards the edges of um, of the tree or of the clusters of where I feel those branches would be. So I'm not taking up the whole area. I this tree is kind of getting hidden in here, so I'm going to concentrate on these two trees in through here just to make my life simpler. And again, I'm just thinking this is just snow sitting on these this beautiful wintry tree so just a teeny tiny bit of gray paint is going to provide me the base coat for my snow and then i will be adding white on top of it i hardly have any paint on my brush and this is in this is so i don't over paint it and i'm just adding these little tiny spots of snow that are sitting in my tree. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white without washing my brush. So again, just a little bit of white on the tip of my brush, and then I'm gonna just start dotting it, giving myself just this faint illusion that there's a little bit of snow sitting on this beautiful, these beautiful trees. They're being illuminated by that wintry sunset of sorts. And again, just doing a little bit more on the edges um, than I am on the interior just to again provide me with this little faint fluffy look to it maybe this you know it has it snowed a few hours ago and this is just the little remnants sticking on the top of the of these branches and then once you've got this done we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step so you can certainly fiddle with this all you'd like and then you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our mousse. I'm gonna be using my chalk, but you could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of basic shapes, and then we're gonna connect those shapes, and by the time we're done, we'll have something that resembles a silhouette of a mousse that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So I'm gonna have my mousse drinking from my brook or my river, whatever you wanna consider this waterway to be. I'm having him kind of come in from over in that area of the wilderness and he's going to have his back feet are going to be in the snow here and the front feet are going to be in the water as he's taking a drink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a circle which is going to represent the rear uh, quarter of the uh, rear half of the of the animal. So as I'm doing this just so to direct you where to put yours you want to have it's gonna be about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half um, wide versus tall. But you wanna have it about maybe an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter away from this area in through here. So wherever you're gonna have the feet, you just wanna kinda of go up about an inch, inch and a half and over to the left. And that's where I'm gonna be putting my circle. So my circle is going to be right in through here. My circle is about an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall. Then I'm gonna make another one that is going to be touching it and it's gonna be a little bit lower. So I'm gonna put my second one at same size right in this area in through here. I'm gonna put a third circle that's only gonna be about a quarter to a half of an inch um, big and it's gonna be right in here. This is going to be for the face or the start of the, the head region. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my circles and we're going to make some legs and we'll have the shape of a moose. <laughs> so on the back end, at the top of the back, he's got a little tail. So I'm going to bring out just a little marker in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this circle to this circle with just kind of a dip down in through there. I'm going to connect the top of this circle to the, um, to the, 
This is like the mid part of the face. So I'm gonna take it from here and connect it right to there. His face goes a little bit further into the water. So th consider this right side of the circle to be like his jaw. So I'm gonna just bring down a little kind of rectangular type of a section right in through here. His nose is gonna be submerged into the water. So that's gonna be that start. I'm gonna connect the bottom of this circle to the back of the jaw like this. So that gives you that shape in through there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect these two circles with just a, uh, a downward dip of kind of a line like that. I need to give them a couple of legs. So I've got two front legs. I'm not gonna have a lot of detail on these legs right now. I'm just really giving markers to where I want them. So I'm gonna have one coming in this direction in through there. I'm gonna have another one coming in through here. So they're coming down right about as far as the nose is. They're not gonna look great right now, but they will when we paint them later. <laughs> I need a back leg, the one that's closest to us. I'm gonna put that one on first. So I'm gonna bring it right to about here. So that's a little bit to the right of the rear end and in the, um, in the land. And I'm gonna bring it kind of in a downward motion like that. I'm gonna come in about almost halfway at the bottom of this circle. This is gonna be the inner thigh. And then I just bring it back like that. And then the other leg just kind of sits behind this one. So I'm gonna just kind of do a line like that. And then a little thigh like that, something like that. And that's all I'm gonna do for my outline for my moose. We are gonna be using our small, we'll put the, the, um, the uh, horns on later. So I'm going to put my chalk away. I'm gonna take out my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our moose, not including the antlers, which I guess I called horns. <laughs> Stop. They're antlers. So not including the antlers, we're gonna do those later. So we're gonna do the base coat for the moose. We're gonna do its reflection in the water as well as the shadow on the snow. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, uh, probably some gray and white and red and yellow. <laughs> lots of colors. I'll call them out. I'm going to start with just brown paint and I'm going to paint in my entire um, body on my moose. As I'm doing this, I'm, I'm not going to be painting the legs yet because I want to paint those. I'm going to do those different colors. Um, but as I'm doing this, I don't, I'm not terribly concerned about um, perfect execution. Um, I'm just really looking to get a nice kind of shape to to the body um, and if I need to make any modifications to the shape as I go through this I can certainly do that because we're going to be doing another layer with um, with all of the fur and details and stuff but if you need to leave some of this chalk mark you can erase it and things of that nature um, so I'm just kind of going through cautiously. I'm going to use my brown to color the legs that are closest to us. So as I'm going through this process, this one on the, uh, the both of the ones on the right, are they going to be the front ones or the ones towards the viewer? So I'm going to paint that in right now while I'm here. I'm going to do the back one as well in a second. But again, just painting it in with brown paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of this animal is in the silhouette, so we're going to be coloring it with a lot of black um, when we go to paint the full coat on it. So if your paint is streaky right now and it's not um, looking awesome, don't worry about it. We'll be disguising a lot of it in a future step. So again, just brown on these legs that are closest to us, just kicking out this little bit of a uh, joint of sorts in the leg and through there and just kind of maybe just bringing this back like this. I'm going to hide the feet in the snow as well so if your hooves don't come out exactly perfect they can be hidden in the snow and then down um, on this front side in through here I'm going to put a little bit they have um, 
some of them have almost like a little beard underneath their, their jaw. So I'm gonna put that in a second as well. I'm gonna just make sure that I've got this kind of bumped out as much as I want it. I, I do wanna have this muzzle kind of maybe just a little bit further. They have big square, m no muzzle areas. So I just wanna make sure I depict that. I'm gonna put a little bit of this um, paint kind of coming back into this little beard area, something like that works. That's nice. I'm gonna pick up a touch of black paint now and get these um, inside legs in through here just to make sure that I've got um, good delineation and I feel like I, I feel like this might need to go back a little bit further. There we go. Um, good delineation between the front and the back legs. And then when we go to paint in the details, we can put a little glow on the other side, but that works out. It keeps me straight as far as not getting one leg confused with the other during this, during this process. I'm gonna just kind of bring that right in through there, give it that little joint area, and then just bring this down towards that water. So now that I've got that on there, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. And again, we'll be putting all kinds of other, um, de oh, I gotta get this little belly area. Let me just make sure that I dipped this down as far as I want. That looks good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going, so don't worry if you can see through this now at all, that's totally fine. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little reflection in the water. So I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of black paint, which I guess I already might've had that on my brush. And I'm gonna start right underneath this nose and just kind of give myself this um, little jaggedy left to right type of brush stroke all the way to my land line. And of course you can put a little bit of water on your brush in order to make sure that you've got a little bit of fluidity. So just little reflections of these limbs and of the um, head. I think I'm gonna put pull out a little bit of what's gonna be the antlers. So I just pulled out a little, a little mark that will represent the antlers when I get there. While I'm in this area, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of ripples in the water. I just picked up a touch of white paint. I'm gonna put a little bit of white ripples around the muzzle of my moose, my moose muzzle and the feet. So it's just a little tiny bit of white paint and you can just ripple out the water. I'm starting with white and then I'm gonna add little bits of the other, the sunset-y kind of colors in it and the watercolor in a second. So that's good. Now I'm picking up a tiny bit of yellow and intermingling that in my ripples. So when I'm doing these little ripples around the animal, I'm just carrying in whatever reflective colors would be from that sky. So I just picked up a bit of red and you can make them as ripply as you want. You can make it as still as you want, but in my opinion, when he, the moose puts his nose in there, he's probably gonna make some good ripples. So, so I'll, I just picked up a little bit more white. I want it to be evident that he is making that water move a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna put a shadow of my moose on my snow. So my light is pretty low. So it would, in my opinion, probably cast a shadow on the ground and I could put shadows now that I'm thinking about it of my other stuff on the ground too. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my gray plus a touch of black and brown and water. So I have a fluid type of um, paint on my brush. My light source is here. So it'd be kind of a low lying skewed long type of a um, shadow. So I'm gonna just kind of um, plan it out here putting more water on my brush so I don't go too dark in through here. I've got some legs. I've got my body, my big moose body. So I'm just using the fluidity of my paint in order to get something that would resemble um, a shadow of this large animal in the snow. So the snow is gonna be lumpy and bumpy and it's gonna have ripples to it. So I don't need to make this a mirror image 
type of a shadow. I'm really just saying, okay, well, here's my head. Let me put some darkness over there. Here's my body. Let me put some darkness in the snow where I would have what would be the evidence of the, the body. And let me get these legs to be represented. And then once I've got that on there, I know I'm going to have maybe my antlers are going to be somewhere in this vicinity so I can just put some darkness in through there and then I just need to intermingle it with the snow a little bit. So I'm going to pick up white, blue, and gray and make sure my feet are nestled into that snow. Make sure that that shadow works with the snow and kind of is intermingled with it so it doesn't look like I just painted that shadow on on top of the snow as a separate element. I want it to look like it's part of the snow. So using transparent paint, when you're doing those um, shadows, will show the colors underneath and it's gonna allow for the, um, a shadow is on top of something else. It would be on top of the snow. So if, and it would see the snow underneath it. So that makes sense to be able to see uh, to use transparent paint and make that snow be visible underneath. And if you can't see your shadow enough, you can either darken the shadow or lighten the snow around it or intermingled with it. So that's looking pretty good from, from my angle over here. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of extra white snow on the other side of these um, feet in through here just to accentuate that a little bit and then if you felt that you wanted to do um, shadows behind any of these other um, objects you certainly could it would make sense to so if you felt um, if you felt that you could you could certainly just pull out some shadows behind these guys in this direction whatever is pleasing to your eye would totally work and then we're going to use the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the body of the moose. We'll put the antlers on in a future step. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, red, and yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a custom fur highlight color that we'll be utilizing on the top of the moose and maybe on little bits of the legs and then we're going to be using black and brown on this dark side of the moose and we'll use white for some highlights. So I have pre-mixed myself my custom fur color which is right here. So uh, how I got to this was yellow, red, brown, and just a teeny tiny touch of white. So I'm going for kind of a rusty type of color uh, kind of like a burnt sienna, but maybe a little bit more orangey in tone. I'm going to be using this as the highlight color of the fur to just give it texture and allow for some nice um, light to be shown from that light source. So I have that custom color on my brush. I'm going to be using it on this top side of the mousse. So I'm just kind of allowing for it to encapsulate the top of the, the mousse. And then as I'm coming down, I'm just kind of tapping it in here. I'm not doing anything really fancy. As I'm coming down the mousse side, I'm gonna start picking up brown paint to get myself a second layer of the brown as it's coming down onto this dark side of the animal. And then I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of black to um, to accentuate the dark side of, of the mousse. But right now I'm just kind of releasing the rest of that paint off of my brush so I'm gonna have some nice light areas or uh, textured type of areas. I'm gonna pick up some black paint right now. So when I'm using the black paint, I'm thinking about accentuating the legs um, not a whole lot, but like this back leg in through here, if I want the thigh to be evident, I can put a little bit of black going up into that body and that's going to let that leg kind of pop out from 
um, from the rest of the body. I don't want to turn this whole mousse black, but I definitely want to have some black on this side. So I just picked up a little bit more black and I'm just kind of tapping it in. So what this does is it's going to give me um, texture to the fur because winter mousse definitely have some nice texture to their fur. I'm going to put a little bit on the uh, same thought process on this front leg in through here. So just to get that leg to kind of stand out in front of the background. Maybe put a little bit on this side of the leg too to give that whole kind of area its own color. And then just kind of tapping this in through here. I want some of this darkness on the side of the face too. So I just have black on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of tap down the side of the face in through here, a little bit in that um, little bearded area. So we've got some of that, um, some of that represented, that dark, little beard that they can get. I'm going to come up this side of the neck in through here and this darkness is going to provide a fabulous base when we go to do the antlers. You'll be able to see those antlers really pop out nice. I'm going to put a little bit of this underneath that tail too so we can so the tail pops out a little bit more. Just put a little bit of darkness on this back side. I'm not bringing the black all the way to the edges of the animal so that way um, it, the edges of the animal are looking like they're being highlighted from the, from the light source. You can even bring a little bit of this darkness down like the center of these back legs and if you need to reshape anything feel free to do so and just probably pulling a little bit of the darkness down here so again they look more like they're in the silhouette. I'm now going to pick up my custom, I washed and dried my brush, I'm picking up my custom color, uh, that rusty color plus a little bit of white on my brush so I can get more texture in the fur up towards this top area. So this is my custom color plus a little bit of white. So I'm just going to tap in these little bits of fur up towards this top area in order to, again, just inform the viewer that this area is being illuminated by that light source. You can even put a little bit right on this um, rear end area. So this is the custom color plus white on my brush, really just illuminating this edge of the animal so you can, so the viewer can see it. So sometimes when we're, when we're going through these processes, it, you know, sometimes we, we think that we've done a good job and then we step back and it's like, wait, I can't see the shoulder or I can't see the outline of it. So these little um, nuances of adding these highlights and these little marks along the edges is going to, again, just help to sell your story and give all the information to the viewer that you want to. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go down that face right now with a little bit of white and my custom color. Again, I've got my antlers that are going to be coming, but I'm just going to come down this. I have my chalk that I don't want in through there. There we go. I'm going to just bring this down. I'm going to kind of curve it on this bridge of the nose just because I know that they've got that little bit of curve to it. I'm going to um, continue to use this color combination on highlights on my legs. So I'm just going to kind of almost outline these legs on the side, you know, to show that they're catching a bit of the um, light source, even the underbelly, you can, you know, just so you can see it, this is going to give you that extra contrast and it's going to allow the viewer to see it in front of um, the, that dark background. If you need to add that bit of contrast, this is the way to do it. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white on my brush so I can get little highlights in this little tiny beard in through here. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your fur on your mousse, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. And then you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the antlers. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be 
creating both sides. Um, one side is going to be very silhouetted by the sun, which is going to be the far side, and then the side of the antlers that are coming towards the viewer, those are going to have a little bit more lightness on them, so they are more visible. So I'm going to start with just black paint with a little bit of water on my brush so it's nice and fluid. I'm going to do the far side one first. I'm going to put that in place. So almost directly across from this beard is where I'm going to start it coming out from the head. So somewhere in this vicinity, I'm going to have it kind of curling out of the head and up towards, I would say, about uh, maybe an inch away from the top of the, um, the back. So something like this. And then I'm going to do the bottom side of it and then we can kind of connect it all in a nice fluid way. So I'm going to take this out in through here and then bring it up like this. So that's kind of the outside structure and then uh, painting in all the little um, points that come off of it. You can certainly get as creative as you want. I, it, they're a little bit different than deer in the in the fact that they kind of are really the the antlers are really thick in a solid kind of mass where they um, meet the um, part that's growing out of the head and then they're almost like kind of cupped a little bit and they have a lot of like shorter points around the edges so I'm going to just kind of take this and this center area becomes pretty darn solid like that and then I will make all these little kind of points all along the edges painting this in through here maybe we've got a couple kind of coming out in through here and of course yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine but that's just kind of the characteristics I was seeing when I was looking at the different um, racks on the on the moose so that's going to be the outside one we'll add a little bit more color to it in a minute but let me just kind of get that little piece in through there so now the one that's going to be on our side what i'm going to do i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to be using brown and white on my brush at the same time so i'm going to provide kind of like a two-tone look to it this one is going to be in a similar way but it's gonna we're gonna see the curve of the outside so I'm gonna start somewhere in this vicinity in through here and I'm actually gonna curve this on top of the um, body so I'm gonna in a similar curve that I did with that one so I'm gonna take it from here and then kind of curve it up like this and then out into or over the um, the edge of the body so brown and white something like this will start me off in that first curve and then what I'm going to do and again I have to in my head imagine you know what this is doing so it's got to come out of the head and then I'm going to have this one kind of curving up like this and it's going to curve in front of the other one so this is where it could get a little confusing but I, that's why we did the back one first and now I'm going to just kind of take this one and get them to kind of connect to the center structure that's coming out of the head. So this is, it's covering, in my opinion, it's covering the eyes. So I'm not seeing the eyes on my animal, which is, which is fine by me. I'm going to get this one maybe to cross over that other one. And I'm, you know, eliminating some of the, the detail of the, um, the neck area, which it's okay by me as well so something like that works for me we're going to put a little bit more darkness on this side in a minute but right now i just wanted to get the base on there while that's drying i'm going to go ahead and put some details on the other one so i'm just going to pick up a little bit more of my brown and white and i'm going to do little tiny highlights on the tips that's oh, maybe a little bit more white than that little tiny highlights on the tips of this back one so it's catching the light from the sun on the other side. So I can just add these little tiny bits of highlights over on that side and that's gonna help to make it look like it's got, it's be, it's got three dimensions to it and it is catching something from the other side. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and now I'm gonna darken this one 
a little bit on our side. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and brown. My white is probably still a little wet. I want to create a shadow on part of this one on the bottom side um, somewhere in through here. So I want to keep a lot of this lightness in through there, but it is, it would to me have some shadow. So w the shadow is going to be to me on this bottom kind of side. I don't want to lose my outline because I still want it to be visible, but I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on in through here and leave that exterior line so we can all see it. And then that's all I'm going to do. I might fiddle with it for another minute, but oh, maybe a little bit more highlight on these little tips. I just picked up a tiny bit of white just to make sure these are really visible these tips and then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your antlers done, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want and then you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to be using my small brush. I think I'm going bottom right on this one with some, well, let's go for some black paint today. And I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool wilderness winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.